Christ, our worship and praise. Thank God for each of you. Just a reminder, sign your attendance card. Leave that in the offering plates uh, at both entranceways. Ah. Uh, announcements. Uh, well, just read through your bulletin. Uh, I got Concordia Life Plan Community. And of course, uh, since uh, uh, August 2nd, we have uh, resumed uh, fellowship time at 9 and and uh, adult class and Sunday school at 9.30. So, uh, uh, if you'd like to come to that. And again, we'll continue to use uh, your bulletin insert. So, let's begin with hymn 802. rise on this 12th Sunday after Pentecost. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. <coughs> In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them his Holy Spirit. 
Therefore go forth in his name and sin no more. Amen. Amen. Our intro this morning, selected verses from Psalm 2. But we will bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Praise the Lord. As for me, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will tell of the decree. The Lord said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Praise the Lord, all nations. Extol him, all peoples. For great is his steadfast love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. But we will bless the Lord from this time forth, and forevermore. Praise the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom to know is everlasting life, grant us to know your Son, Jesus, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may boldly confess him to be the Christ, and steadfastly walk in the way that leads to life eternal. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with the reading of the scripture. Out for you on the back of your bulletin. The Old Testament reading from Isaiah 51, verses 1 through 6. Listen to me, you who pursue righteousness, you who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn, and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who bore you. For he was but one when I called him, that I might bless him and multiply him. For the Lord comforts Zion. He comforts all her waste places and makes her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of song. Give attention to me, my people, and give ear to me, my nation, for a law will go out from me, and I will set my justice for a light to the peoples. My righteousness draws near, my salvation has gone out, and my arms will judge the peoples. The coastlines hope for me, and for my arm they wait. Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look at the earth beneath. For the heavens vanish like smoke and the earth will wear out like a garment. And they who dwell in it will die in like manner. But my salvation will be forever and my righteousness will never be dismayed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading from Romans chapter 11, beginning at verse 33 into verse 8 of chapter 12. By the power of the Holy Spirit, Paul writes, Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable are his judgments, and how inscrutable his ways! For who has known the mind of the Lord who has been his counselor? Or who has given a gift to him that he might be repaid? For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. 
For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function, so we, though many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, in proportion to our faith. If service, in our serving. The one who teaches, in his teaching. The one who exhorts, in his exhortation. The one who contributes, in generosity. The one who leads, with zeal the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the gospel reading. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist. Others say Elijah. And others, Jeremiah, or what are the prophets? He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly charged the disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It continues to be our privilege and freedom to confess our Christian faith using this morning the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. Savior.
grace, peace, and mercy to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Isaiah, continuing our Old Testament readings, 700 years before Jesus, still predicting the coming one, that salvation is coming to all the world, not just the people of Israel. St. Paul writing to the Romans in chapter 11 and parts of chapter 12, also reminding who we are as Christians. And in the gospel text of Matthew 16, we have what we call as Christians the great confession of Peter. It's interesting because they're in Caesarea Philippi, which is north of the Sea of Galilee by a considerable distance, considering they probably walked there. But also remember, just a few weeks ago in our readings, Jesus was on the sea coast at Tyre and Sidon, and the Canaanite woman comes to him and heal my daughter, and Jesus, well, I don't know, you know, I'm here for the people of Israel, but yet instantly heals that daughter. So, they're in Gentile country, that is non-Jewish country. They're up north. And the thought would be, is that sort of like a break from, remember now, we go back more than a couple of weeks, uh, the great events that were going on that thousands, thousands were following Jesus, and why wouldn't they? Imagine Jesus being in the world today, being in our city today, walking through the seats, the streets of our own cities. There would be literally thousands coming. Why? Because one, to hear his word, but also to heal, to be healed. You were lame. He healed the lame. He healed the blind, the sick. All those things. He even raised the dead to life. And so the commentaries on this text wonder, did Jesus just take a break, although we skip forward to, to the next chapter, and we had those readings way back on the transfiguration as Jesus takes with him selected apostles, and they go to the top of probably Mount Hermon, which is up by Damascus. That's how far north. And they're on the way. They're really halfway between uh, Galilee and, and Damascus already at Caesarea Philippi, named for Caesar. So, did they do that to take a break? Because literally thousands were following. But then Jesus asked the disciples an interesting but a leading question. Jesus asked the, the disciples, what are the people saying about me? And, and in this political season, uh, if you're like me, your phone, perhaps not now, but uh, months ago, rang off the hook. Well, if so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so are going to run for this office, who do you favor? Or some of them, uh, having a degree in marketing, I recognize uh, setups when they do a survey. And it's like, well, what do you think of this? What do you think of this? And ultimately, it's a political call. So is Jesus testing the waters here? I'm going to come out. I'm going to let the people of Israel know that the Messiah is here. Because that's the meaning of the Christ, but in Greek. And so, what was going on here? But then Jesus asked a more important question. Not what do the people say, but to the apostles, to the disciples, who do you say that I am? And so, suddenly, suddenly, was there excitement among the apostles. He's finally going to tell us that clearly he's the Christ, that it is the Messiah. Remember, time and time again, encounter, especially with the scribes and the Pharisees. If you're the Christ, that is the Messiah, the Savior sent by God. If you're that one, tell us. But they also ask, well, if you're the one, this is like a trick pony. We want you to do a few things for us, do a few signs, heal a few people. Jesus says, no, it doesn't work like that. And so, who do you say I am? 
For the issue is not really about what the crowd thinks. That's secondary. But what's in their hearts? Who do they think Jesus is? But guess what? It's the same question Jesus asked every Christian of every generation. It's one that he asks Christians today. It is the same question that was answered at our baptism if we were baptized as a, as a child or as a baby. And others answered for us. It is also at our confirmation, which we had two of our young people confirmed last week and then uh, Nicholas confirmed uh, on the 8th. And they answered those questions. Every Sunday, we at Emmanuel, today the Apostles' Creed, in a couple of weeks when we have communion, it'll be the Nicene Creed. That we confess, yes, this is Jesus Christ. This is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. This is who we believe God is. Now there's some of our brothers and sisters in Christendom that say, oh, the creeds, the creeds aren't scripture. You know, they want it. This book and, and Jesus said it like the Lord's Prayer. But yet, having said that, the Apostles' Creed that we confess this morning, verse by verse, sentence by sentence, each one taken from Scripture. I've long said when people say, well, why do you Lutherans say the Creed? Well, because they're true, they're accurate, they're scriptural. Can you find one, one sentence in the Creed? that doesn't agree with Scripture, let me know. Which one do you think? Which one do you disagree in? When we say Jesus Christ, the Son of God, born of the Virgin Mary, check mark. Suffered under Pontius Pilate, check mark. Was crucified, died, and buried, check mark. Descended into hell, yes, that's from the Scriptures. Not to try to save those in hell, but rather to proclaim His victory over sin, death, and the devil. Check mark. And so, this morning, we have those wonderful, dynamic words of Peter that Jesus himself tells us, Peter, you didn't just come upon this or stumble upon it or do it on your own. It was given to you by God. So, Peter, who am I? And the strong and abiding words of Peter are also the strong and abiding words of the Holy Christian Church, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. The Christ in Greek, Christos. And it means the anointed. For Jesus has been anointed with the Holy Spirit to be without limit, to be our prophet, priest, and our king. The Son of the living God. What other God would there be? If he's not living, then what's the point? That's been the point throughout the ages that that mankind for generation, for generation after generation, well, we're going to have this stone idol or, or this wooden idol or something made from man's hands. Our friends in the Far East do statue after statue. We're going to worship this statue, really? Does the statue do anything? Maybe in their minds, but we worship the living God, the Son of the living God. We worship Jesus Christ, who is, after all, Lord of all. Who then is this Jesus Christ that we confess and profess weekly and daily? As a prophet, he personally preached in his time on earth. As a priest, he fulfilled the law for us, that is, the law of God. He who knew no sin died for the sins of all, for your sins, my sins, and the sins of all mankind, past, present, and future. And as king, he rules with power over all creation and govern and protects especially his church. In this time of the pandemic, though, don't be confused by that. I've talked about this before. Can Christians get the virus? Absolutely. We have one of our members right now battling it, Clark Gable. And yet, we know we're not adverse to pain and suffering. We're not adverse 
to cancer and financial issues and on. You can list a whole litany of things. But Jesus reminds us time and time again, I am with you always. That's our power. That's our strength. To know that, yes, God gives us a brain to use. God gives us common sense to use. And so, Peter's confession, dear friends, is our confession. It is the confession of the Holy Christian Church. Powerful words from Jesus here. Even the gates of hell cannot stand against this confession. And for years, we probably looked at that and thought, well, yeah, the devil and sin attack me every day. The devil attacks us as Christians. He attacks our congregation. He attacks the holy Christian church throughout the world. And Jesus tells us, we'll stand. Yet think about it, how he says it, the gates of hell. We're not the fortress, hell is. Hell has the gates. And the strong and abiding word of God pounds on those doors daily. Yet, does he cease? No. There's social unrest within our country. Why is that? Sin and Satan. I've told you that many times. Why do we have the trials and tribulations? Again, sin and Satan. The fall of mankind, creation fell with them. We'll probably hear more about that, but it won't be in that regard. This coming week is now no less than two hurricanes or probably going to hit the Gulf Coast. The historians now tell us, oh, well, that only happens once every 80, 90 years. And I was like, oh, great. We get a pandemic that, well, we only get that every 100 years. And now we're going to get two hurricanes hit the coast at the same time. Wow, thanks a lot. You know, Jesus reminds us we confess with our mouth and we believe with our hearts. For those who were here last week for the confirmation service, those are the words in that litany as we asked the young people, do you believe in Jesus Christ? Yes. Do you believe in God the Father? Yes. Do you believe in God the Son? Yes. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church? Yes and yes and yes. For we confess with our mouth and believe with our hearts. I know we have a number of military veterans in here. And some took this oath a while back. Randy's up here smiling at me. I wasn't picking on you, Randy. And when a person is inducted, do you folks remember your words when you raised your hand? I do solemnly swear I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the officers appointed over me according to the regulations and the Uniform Code of Military Justice. So help me God. Like many who took that oath, we probably stood before an altar like the one at Emmanuel or like last week in our confirmation. And we confessed the name of Jesus. And yes, we made solemn promises at that time. We might not have fully understood if we were just an eighth grader. But God did, just as he did last week. But he loves to hear what we say. And he has promised to use us even though, like Peter so long ago, we are fallen and sinful people. He has made our words too. Jesus is the Christ, the rock on which his church stands and is built. The Greek here, dear friends, is very, very clear. Some would say, well, he gave this right to somebody else, but no. When you look at the modifiers of the Greek text on this very text, it's clear. When Jesus says the church is built upon the rock, he's speaking about himself. 
that he is our rock and our salvation. And the words we speak in Christ's name and with Christ's love are hammer blows that crush Satan's power. It is who we are, after all, for it is the one whom we confess because we are his children, the baptized children of God. Amen. Now may that peace of God, which transcends all human understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, this day and every day. Amen. We continue with the prayers. We have two additions to our prayer list this morning. Unfortunately, Chris Jackson's grandson, Cooper, uh, fell out of a tree, as Chris acknowledges that, and broke his arm in two places. Poor Cooper. We pray for Cooper's recovery. We also have a prayer for Scott McKay's parents, Doug and Meredith. Uh, uh, they live in the San Francisco area, and they also have what I would call a summer cabin in the mountains. That cabin is now nothing but dust because the California wildfires uh, destroyed it and all the surrounding uh, cabins uh, in that area. Let us pray. Lord God of our salvation, we pray this day for the Oklahoma District, for President Hinckley, and for all our congregations, pastors, teachers, and commission ministers, that we would continue to share the good news of the gospel of sins forgiven and life eternal through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And dear Heavenly Father, we pray for your guidance and for your protection as the virus continues in our world. You have promised to hear whatever we ask in the name of your dear Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for all who are continuing to battle on the front lines of this virus. We continue to pray for our doctors and nurses and all our medical personnel and for our first responders, our firemen, our EMTs, and our policemen and all who continue to respond to all disasters. Guard and protect them in their duties now and into the future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Heavenly Father, you know the hearts and the minds of all. You know those who are sick and those who are shut in and those who stand in need of your prayer, of your prayer, your healing and your comfort. So we pray today for Chris's grandson, Cooper. We pray for Scott's parents, Doug and Meredith, Meredith, at the loss of their cabin, that they may be able to recover from this disaster. We pray for Ivan Smith, for Lon Keister, for Harvey Norris, for Anna Warnke, for Paula Montgomery, for Sandy Osmus, for Stephanie Ruth, for Pastor Louis Keneef, for Barbara Phillips, for Pastor Barry Hinkey, for Jim McCright, for Sherry Dixon, for Kimberly McKay, for Alita Newhouse, for Cordova Kastner, for Pastor Mark Erler, and for Clark Gable. We pray your spirit's comfort to be upon each of them, O Lord, that you would guard and protect them in the days and weeks ahead, and that if it be thy will, you would grant healing to the sick and comfort and protection to those affected. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, dear friends in Christ, as you go forth this day and every day, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord always look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Please be seated. We close with 816. Son to thee.